your brothers and sisters in Christ. What do you think it was like for those disciples on Good Friday? Seeing their master, their teacher, their friend murdered. Seeing him arrested unjustly. Seeing the pain that they caused him. And knowing that the one that they loved was gone. How do you think they felt? What do you think was running through their minds, especially people like Peter? But all of them, really. But they all ran. They all deserted him. And Peter denied even knowing him. Do you think they blamed themselves? Do you think that they were beating themselves up, wondering if, wondering why did I do what I did? If I had done things differently, then maybe Jesus would still be here. Have you ever felt that type of grief? Have you ever felt that kind of regret? Where you look at yourself and say, how could I have done what I've done if I didn't do what I did, then things would be a lot different. Maybe someone's life wasn't at stake, but maybe a relationship, friendship, a grade, a job, success. Jesus warned them that that they were going to feel a certain way. And that everyone around them was going to feel a little bit different. Jesus tells them in John chapter 16, he says, I tell you the truth, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. A woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come. But when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish because of her joy that a child is born into the world. So with you. Now is your time of grief, but I will see you again and you will rejoice and no one will take away your joy. The disciples were going to be sad, and they were. But all that changed. That changed when they saw Jesus again, three days later, on Easter Sunday, when he was alive and well. Throughout this world, or throughout our lives, we will struggle with the pain we have caused others, with the pain we've even caused ourselves. We will suffer regret and sadness. Sometimes we'll even face tragedy that we didn't cause nor even deserve to have. There will be pain, and a lot of times when that pain comes, there might be rejoicing or happiness from others. That's just the world we live in one full of sin, one full of pain and sadness and tears. But the promise that Jesus gave to the disciples weren't just for the disciples, and they just weren't for Easter Sunday. Jesus was also pointing ahead to a reality that would be for all his children, for all of us who he has called to believe and has given the gift of faith to believe. And that is, while this world is full of trouble, where we will grieve and even suffer pain and tragedy, there will come a time when our joy will be so great, so glorious, so grand, that we will forget the pain, we will forget the torment, we will forget the guilt. And that is on the last day when we will go to our new home, our real home, 
and that is heaven. That reality became ours on Easter Sunday. That joy that was never going to leave the disciples was the joy of not only knowing that Jesus was alive, but knowing that they were going to be with him in heaven, a place that Jesus is preparing for all of us right now. So that when that day comes, whether we leap past from this life or Jesus returns again, we can live in joy and confidence that we'll never perish or spoil or fade because Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, because of Jesus' resurrection, we have joy, we have confidence, and we even have peace despite what this world might do to us, despite the guilt we might feel. Because Jesus rose from the dead, our sins are forgiven, and our home now is in heaven, a place that will never perish, spoil, or fade, a place that will last for all eternity, a place where we will never feel the terrors of our conscience, nor even the attack of any evil, for we will be dwelling in your presence forever and ever. In, your, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. And may the Lord bless your day.